SMEMA connections. The small footprint in line system uses the SMEMA con communications to talk to the loader conveyor and the unload conveyor in, this, in the uh, production floor. So for the loader side, um, it will control the loader with two signals, which is called the load available signals and the ICT available, uh, ICT ready. Um, for the unloaded side, it will communicate with it through another three signals, um, the unload ready signals and the ICT available signals. And there's another signal called the OKNG OK signals or the pass fail signals. All right, so this is the unload side. The connections are being made through two connectors at the back of the systems. So you will see uh, at the back of the system, you will see that uh, there's a connector marked as SMEMA B. B stands for back end. This means that uh, this connector will connect to the unloader side of the uh, conveyor. And then there's and the other one is called the SMEMA F. SMEMA F, F stands for front end. This connects to the loader side. The entire SMEMA connections is being handled through a, a set of relays. Um, therefore, there is no actual voltage present on the signals itself. So each relay is being rated for two amps uh, within the small footprint system. So let's look at the loader site and uh, let's look at how, how does a transfer happen. Okay, so the transfer will always be initiated by the the system that holds the DUT. So for the loader side, once the lo loader receives a DUT, it will signal to the ICT or the small footprint that, uh, I, that the DUT is available for transfer. So to do this, the loader will close the load available relay. So the load available relay will go from the open state down to a closed state, right? which is this relay over here will go into close. And this will signal the small footprint that there is a, a DUT available for transfer at the loader side. So once the small footprint detects that the load available is being triggered, it will respond with a ICT ready signal when it is ready to receive a board. Okay, so the ICT or the small footprint will close its relay and signal to the loader side that the ICT is ready to accept the DOT at this point of time. Once the loader detects that the ICT ready signal has been triggered, it starts the transfer, it, it runs the conveyor. At the same time, the small footprint will run its conveyor as well. So now the DOT will start moving into, into, the, into the system. And when it passes through the output sensor of the load on the loader side, the loader will open the load available signals because the DUT is already out of the loader. And when it enters into the small footprint, the small footprint will release the ICT ready signal because the DUT is now in the in the small footprint systems. All right, so that is how uh, transfer is being um, conducted from the loader side. The next one is from the unloader side. So this is right now the DUT is in the small footprint. Um, test has completed and the DUT is supposed to be transferred out of the small footprint system. So the first thing that the, DU, that the uh, small footprint will do is that it will send out the ICT available signals to the unloader. Uh, at the same time, it will also send out the OKNG OK signal as well at the same time. Okay, so for this, it sends out the ICT available by closing the ICT available signal. And for the OKNG OK signal or pass fail, if the test is a pass, right, it will remain as open. Right? For, so for this particular example, the test is a fail test. That's why the OKNG OK signal has been closed. All right, so once the ICT available signals has been sent out, the unloader will detect the ICT available signal and it will respond with the unload ready signal back to the small footprint. So when the unloader is ready to accept the DUT, it will close the unload ready signals. And at this point, the small footprint will start to run its conveyor to send the DUT out. So when the DUT moves along the conveyor in the small footprint, 
it will reach it will reach the output sensor of the small footprint at this particular point of time only the leading edge of the DUT is at the output sensor of the small footprint system it doesn't mean that the entire DUT has already left the small footprint so the small footprint system cannot stop its conveyor at this time so there is a delay time involved a user can 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 uh, choose to adjust it from the software it is called the product output delay time okay um, the delay time is typically at about three seconds right user can adjust it longer or shorter okay so the DUT the conveyor will continue to run when the when the output sensor detects the DUT Okay, and continue to run for that amount of time so to ensure that the entire DUT is being sent out of the system so when a DUT goes out of the system it, it enters into the unloader the unloader will release the unload ready signal all right so this completes the entire cycle of a SMEMA transfer from the uh, DUT uh, from the small footprint out to the unloader the next slides I have is a, uh, a bit of animations to try to explain the transfer again. So let's take a look at how, how this goes. The green box here represents the DUT. Then we have the loader conveyor over here, the small footprint conveyor in the middle, and the unloader conveyor at the towards the right. The little blue boxes represents the input and output sensors of individual systems. And of course, we have the fixture and the press. So we start off by a DUT coming in to the loader side. So DUT moves into the loader, triggering the input sensor of the loader. The load available signal goes down, telling the tester that there is a DUT available for transfer. When the tester is ready to accept the DUT, the tester will pull down the um, ICT ready signal to a close, all right, to a close state. So when the signal is being closed, the loader will start to run the conveyor to move the DUT in. When the DUT moves along the conveyor, it passes through the output sensor of the loader and that will release the load available signals. And the DUT enters the small footprint, it triggers the input sensor of the small footprint and this will release the ICT ready signals uh, to the loader itself. Right, so that completes the transfer of the DUT into the tester. Now the DUT is already in the tester. The conveyor goes down, I, the press goes down, and the testing will start. At the end of the test, con, uh, press will goes up, conveyor goes up, ICT will send out the ICT available signal to the unloader side. So at this point of time, the pass-fail signal or the OKNG OK signal will be sent out at the same time as well, but it is not represented here. Okay, so it sends out the ICT available signal to the unloader side, telling the unloader that the DUT is ready for transfer out of the system. The unloader will then respond to pull down, uh, uh, to close the, the unload ready signal when it is ready to receive. So unload ready signal uh, goes to the close. The conveyor will start running. When the DUT leaves the small footprint, it triggers the output sensor. It, this releases the ICT available signals. When the DUT enters into the unloader, it releases the unload ready signal. And that's how the transfer of the DUT uh, happened out of the small footprint system. Thank you for watching the Agilent i1000D how to videos. You may find other Agilent i1000 videos in the Agilent MFG Testis YouTube channel. If you'd like to learn more about the Agilent i1000D, please call your local sales representative or visit the website at www.agilent.com/find/i1000. Thank you.